Hello and welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. We are now on module number 8, lecture number 1 and this time we have a very interesting module and probably the most practically useful of all the modules that you have been having under this course communication skills. This is on interview skills. So, that is why I said that it is very practically helpful and useful also. Apart from developing this as a major component of communication skills, it is a specialized activity skills particularly ensuring a kind of result. When we generally talk about communication, we also said that successful communication means that the communication process is complete. Now, what do we mean that the communication process is complete, that the sender has sent an idea, the receiver received it, interpreted it correctly and responded to that favorably in the sense that the sender is able to influence even the receiver and get a favorable response. Now, this is basically is what we are trying to do when we are trying to import some interview skills. You as the sender try to send some signals, try to send some images try to send some verbal component which should influence, which should convince the panel members of the interview and which should make them respond to you favorably in the sense not only to select you as one of the candidates, but to select you as the topmost ranking candidate and give you as many increments as possible in the job and to make you the most desirable candidate right from the beginning. Now, with this frame of mind, let us look at what you are going to learn particularly in this lecture. This module will contain several lectures, but just to begin with and to overall have an idea of what you will have in this module, you will first learn about particularly in this lecture some misconceptions about an interview whether a student or even a teacher or even any employee once he goes for an interview has some kind of misconceptions. So, let us try to tackle those misconceptions first and then understand what is an interview and of course, it goes without saying why one should attend an interview once you know what is an interview. Then how should one prepare for an interview? what are the other required elements towards the preparation for an interview. And once you realize how you prepare, then how do you ensure success? So, there are some keys to success in interviews. What are the keys? What are those strategies that if you follow, you ensure success in interviews? And once you learn this much, then I will talk about attending an interview. So, if you understand, I will take you face by face, first clearing the misconceptions, then preparing you mentally and then getting you ready and then taking you to the interview room and then making you attend the interview using some of the practical tips and some of the strategies that you will learn through this communication skills course and particularly in this lecture. And then having attended the interview, how do you close the interview? So, there are some formalities, some etiquette that demand that you close it in a particular manner. So, once you close the interview, what are the post interview functions? What should you do once the interview is over? So, many of you think that once the interview is over, you are done with it. No, there are certain things you need to do and then there are certain things you need to keep in your mind there are certain level of positivity that you need to nurture even after you finish attending that interview. So, with that discussion on post interview functions, I will be able to complete this module on interview. Now, just to begin with in this lecture, let us look at the misconceptions about an interview. Now, basically people think that possessing an impressive resume ensures success in interviews. That is, if I have a very impressive bio data or a curriculum vitae CV, 
if I have a very impressive one, if it is a perfect one, I will definitely get the job. Now, this is a misconception, I will explain why. Some people also think that if I can get professional help in writing a resume, so there are so many organizations just like magicians promising something, they also promise that we will get you the most perfect resume and give us lots of money, okay, we will write a good resume. So, people go to this kind of organizations for professional help with the notion that if I can get professional help in writing a resume, I will also get the best job in my area, in my discipline. So, it all matters that how I write that resume and then depending on that I will get the best job. Now, I said these are misconceptions because possessing an impressive resume do not ensure success in interviews. So, what will it ensure actually? So, it depends on the role of a resume. A resume at the most can ensure only a call letter to the interview, however good, however moderate or even bad it either gets a call letter or it does not get a call letter and then it fulfills certain norms which are required for a candidate to appear for the interview. So, a resume clearly outlines the norms and spells out that one is fulfilling those norms and then the other side the employer sees that the person is fulfilling the norms. So, there is no harm in calling this person, so the call letter is sent. The call letter is just sent based on the norms, even if it is sometimes shabbily written, employers do not mind and still call the candidate. That is why there is no such thing as a perfect resume that will immediately get a job. Then what determines success? It is your performance in the interview that gets you the job, it is not the resume as such which is fundamental in getting you the call letter but it is your performance in the interview that is going to get you the job. So, this module is all about performing giving your best in the interview. What are other misconceptions about an interview? There are people who uh, are narcissistic that is they have fallen in love with themselves and then they think that they have very good looks, they look handsome girls think they look beautiful, voice is good, melodious, impressive. So, those people think that my good looks will certainly get me the job. Now, on the one hand again it can take you to the interview level, it can even succeed in creating that first good impression, but what will actually get you the job? Assuming that the interview panel members are wise enough to see through the looks, go beyond the skin, they have the maturity to know whether the candidate has the intellectual and the personality traits, the intellectual abilities combined with the desired personality traits with the workmanship is something that they are looking for, it is just not the looks that is going to get you the job. So, do not spend so much time on cosmetics and getting creams and all that, but focus more on interview skills. Looking good is important in an interview, but that is not the only selection criteria, so that you should keep in your mind. More on misconceptions about an interview, there are people who think that okay, I do not have looks, but I have lots of talent. I can show lots of certificates which I have got for extracurricular activities, then I have something to do with sports, I am good at music, I am good at directing movies also, I have lots like that certificates. Now, this again is a sort of misconception because your talent will take you there, but you will still need skills to win in the interviews. What does it mean? You need not be somebody like A. R. Rahman or Sachin Tendulkar to actually get the job. Even if you have moderately good skills in extracurricular activities, that is like the topping of the cake. 
that adds to the essential qualifications that you have got academically and these ones add to those qualifications and just highlights certain other aspects of your personality which is again impressive, but which alone will not get you the job. This has to be combined with certain other skills which are mandatory for doing well in interview. Now, there is also this person who is just a bookworm or who is just focused only on studies and then he has got the best marks, maybe even he is a gold medalist and he is the topper. So, he thinks that I am the college topper, so I will top in all interviews. Now, there is no guarantee, there is no correlative corresponding assurance that if you are the topper, you will top in all interviews. It is a kind of misconception because topping in college, topping in examinations call for examination skills, but topping in interviews demand interview skills. Now, if you are a topper and if you also possess interview skills, certainly you get the job, but there are so many cases where in IIT somebody is a 10 pointer and somebody else is an 8 pointer. The 8 pointer with lot of extracurricular activities, extroversial tendencies and very intrinsic soft skills, good communication skills does better in interview and then the employers take the candidate much to the neglect of the candidate even with 10 point or they take this candidate give more uh, in terms of uh, offer in terms of perks compared to the candidate who actually is academically bright. So, academic brightness in terms of getting marks will not only ensure success in interviews, you need to show that brightness, you need to shine, you need to exude that radiance inside the interview room. What happens when somebody is a bookworm, the person is not exposed to the outer world, the person has not developed socializing skills, the person has not developed good intercommunication skills. So, what happens when he gets into the interview room? the person is muted, becomes devoiced. He knows all the answers, but does not know how to present his views on those answers. And sometimes he knows the answer, but he is so frightened, afraid, he is afraid of even looking at the face of the panel members that he does not even give the answer. When he comes out, he regrets for his life. So, there are certain other skills, which we call as interview skills, which are required even if somebody is the college topper and thinks that he can top all interviews. Just like to point out to you that even many toppers get rejected due to lack of interview and or communication skills. Now, let us look at the beginning of beginning. Now, once you are clear with all misconceptions that marks alone will not get it, resume alone is not going to ensure success, good looks is not going to directly get you a good job. Talent, yes, but not exactly. Now, once you are clear about all these misconceptions, let us get into the beginning of beginning. How do you begin the interview? Now, in a sense, I would say that it has already started, okay. just like uh, the time clock that is always running down the interview time has already started. You should have started at a very early time, early stage in improving your communication skills, thinking about the job, asking questions about yourself etcetera on the one hand. But on the other hand, when I say beginning of beginning, even before beginning the interview, what should you have as a start in your mind? Now, you should begin with the right frame of mind. What does uh, right frame of mind imply. Even when you get the call letter, some people think that, who oh, is it by mistake they have sent the call letter, such a big company, such a huge job offer. Now, am I the one who is going to get it? And how come my other friend who has better talent, who has better marks, he was not called for the interview? 
why is it that I was called for the interview? So, it may be a mistake. Now, this is wrong frame of mind. Now, right frame of mind think that when you have got the call letter, the employer has already thought of some potential in you, whether you are seeing it in you or not that is a different issue, but the employer has seen it, perceived it okay, or expecting that it is in you. Now, he wants to assure that it is there. Now, once you get it, it means that you have a decent chance, a very decent chance to win in the interview and join for the job once you get that call letter. So, do not have a wrong frame of mind, once you get it, be sure that the employer is actually looking for selecting you, not rejecting. Then, once you kind of attribute to that kind of frame of mind, the next thing that you should do is not to wait a, waste a single moment till the interview. Do not waste a single moment, especially once you get the call letter and this really you cannot afford to waste a single moment and you should spend every single moment in preparing for the interview and practicing as much as possible. Then, what is again about the right frame of mind? Some people get over excited, they think that oh I got from this company, I am the greatest, I am the owner of this world, now once I get this job, I am so big, so, so over excited and then they do miserably bad in the interview. Some again get frightened, they feel apprehensive, they feel intimidated. Do I have the talent, do I have the skills to really get through this interview? Now, neither get so over excited nor get frightened. Balance your mind, that is the right frame of mind that I want you to have just before the beginning of the interview. And once you get the call letter, do not fret, just be calm and collected, be calm and collected. Collect the best part of yourself and stay calm, do not get nervous or overconfident. Nervousness will also pull you down, overconfidence will also pull you down. So, do not get nervous or overconfident and as the saying goes, pride goes before the fall. If you are so proud, if you think that oh I am the greatest, I am going to just get this thing. Now, without doing sufficient homework, if you only believe in your illusions that you will be able to do anything, everything in the world just because you are great and you think or you delude yourself to the belief that you are the greatest. Now, that kind of pride can actually lead you to the fall. So, take note of that kind of attitude and try to change it and coming to nervousness, understand that nervousness is natural and positive. In the module on group discussion, while talking about overcoming your fear as well as in the module on oral presentation while talking about overcoming fear. I gave lot of examples and then I was referring to even great actors, talented musicians, great composers, all having nervousness just those few seconds, few minutes before actually they give their best performance. So, all of them when they are asked, they say, they are afraid and they take that as a kind of positive thing in them, because if they do not fear, they do not bring out the best in them. So, they fear, they fear that they should bring the best in them and they understand that that nervousness is natural and that comes to all of us. All of us want to bring the best in us and then all of us get nervous when you are given with that opportunity. All of us are afraid that probably I will not be able to perform well and it is that thought is making us nervous. So, understand that it is natural and it is also positive and take it in that positive sense. Without nervousness, you are not going to bring the best in you. With nervousness and when you learn to overcome that nervousness, definitely you are going to bring the best in you. 
So, keep nervousness under control and think that it is positively helpful to you and do not run away figuratively from this nervousness, confront it, overcome it. Now, generally fear in control ensures huge success. What is courage? Hemingway said it is grace under pressure, it is nothing but showing grace, remaining graceful under pressure. That is, you do not show the stress on your face, you know one side of yourself is saying that, yeah, I am afraid, but so what? Everybody is afraid. So, that fear is within me, so what? Everybody has the fear. Maybe there is somebody who is much more afraid of the situation than me, but I will not show it out, I will just laugh, I will make fun, I will be cheerful, I will be optimistic. Nothing is going to happen, heavens will not fall just because I am afraid of this situation. So, I will keep it in control. So, that frame of mind thinking that you will control that actually ensures success in you. So, that is the right frame of mind, but looking at this from the other side and if you ask the question, what makes it frightening anyway? Why should one fear, especially a job interview? What makes it frightening? As against giving a talk for instance, oral presentation, what makes it frightening? Apart from the aspects which I highlighted in oral presentation such as fear of humiliation etcetera, what makes it frightening especially here is the factor of success or failure. Now, here either you get it or you do not get it and you know when you get it, when you are successful, it can actually alter the course of life. As in a fairy tale, it will give a very happy and continuous ending. The life is literally becoming a bed of roses, very fragrant, very happy and then you are in that uh, very uh, positive environment prosperity is surrounding you. When you get the job, so you get recognition and there are uh, certain jobs, certain offers which become talk of the town, which gain you reputation, which is even published in the media like newspaper sometimes even announced on TV that so and so got the highest package from this institute. So, everybody wants to know who is that person and then you get the best recognition possible. So, it gives you that recognition. So, apart from that recognition, the financial aspect of it, money chases you, it is very lucrative to get that, you get that coveted car, you get that bungalow and then as I said as in a fairy tale you get married to that uh, intellectual girl or beautiful girl, that model, that actress or that good looking girl, homely girl, your uh, friend, whomever it is that whom everybody wanted to marry, but you could win the girl because you got that job. So, success brings you so many things, money, prestige, recognition, wish fulfillment, happiness, prosperity and what not. You ask for it, you get it. Now, this is on the one hand and as I said, it is like a dream fulfillment, wish fulfillment and it is a dream becoming reality. Now, when I say that this is happening when you get success, what makes it frightening further is the aspect that failure, when you fail, it can leave you in the depths of despair. The people who go to the extent of committing suicide that they could not repeatedly perform well in interviews. So many job interviews and not even a single company, single organization thought of selecting the candidate. The candidate is dejected in a very gloomy mood and then in that flickering weak moment even meditate suicide and attempts it. So, that is the negative aspect of this attempting to do well in interview. If you succeed, you get everything. If you fail, you can become so desperate. So, 
this is one thing that is making the overall performance frightening and you also know that the stakes are very high. It is like a life or death situation. You win, you enjoy a vitalized life, a very rejuvenating lifestyle, you lose. So, it is like death in life, nobody notices you after that whether you are alive or not, people do not bother, it does not matter for them. So, it is a life or death situation and understand that it is also a fight or flight situation, especially attending a job interview. Instead of running away from that, once you attend the job interview, it is like either you get better, you do very well in the interview and then having experienced that tough interview, you get better, you are more equipped, you have experienced. Now, you are better than a person who has not undergone that interview experience. So, you get better or if you have funked, if you have done very badly or if you have mentally shut off and avoided facing the panel, did not answer any questions, did not respond, kept your body language very negative, did not maintain eye contact, slouched, looked down, did not go with preparation, just took things for granted. Now, you can get it worse. So, either you get better or you get worse, but imagine the situation where you want to make it better and you want to fight it out. Now, once again the stakes are higher and it is also involving the risk. Now, when it is low risk, you also know that the return money. So, that part is also low. When it is high risk, so the return you get is also very high. It is better to go for tough job interviews, experience the toughest kind of questions, enjoying attending the interview and coming and telling that I faced the most toughest kind of panel ever, the toughest questions and how did I tackle, how my presence of mind worked. Now, that gives you huge returns, not only in terms of popularity, but also in terms of money. So, what kind of frame of mind attitude you should have? So, you should just go there with an attitude to take that risk and if possible with that killer kind of instinct, I will take the risk and then come what may, I will succeed. Now, before actually we get into the interview room scenario, let us again look at the situation in India. Are there interviews being conducted in interview uh, in India? Yes, hundreds of interviews, thousands of interviews. There are season like April to July, there are thousands of interviews in the country. Now, is there a job for everyone? Yes, of course there is a decent and lucrative job, a decent and profitable job waiting for even a five point somebody. Remember the novel written by Chetan Bhagat, five point someone. Now, five point someone is a kind of average person in IIT yardstick, ten pointer is at the other end, okay, the highest performer, the peak achiever. Even for a person who has very moderate achievement, very moderate success, what I mean to say is, let us say in terms of uh, university grading, somebody got 60 percent or somebody got second class or somebody even got third class. Now, even this person has a decent chance of getting a job, especially in this time when there is economic boom, when there are plenty of jobs then what is the problem prevailing in India, when there are so many jobs? In India, strictly speaking, we do not actually have the problem of unemployment. We really do not have the problem of unemployment. To some, it may be a very shocking statement, how come we do not have the problem of unemployment and why is it so, there are so many who are without jobs. Now, as I said, strictly speaking, we really do not have this problem of unemployment. Then what problem do you have? We really have the problem of unemployability, 
employability what does it mean repeatedly invariably interview panel members go to schools go to institutes college and then they do not select candidates when you ask them why didn't you select the candidate so much money you have invested in terms of uh, conducting this interview flight fare is given so much money is uh, spent on accommodation and giving remuneration remuneration to the panel members having spent so much why did not the panel select and why did not the employer as such didn't desire selecting a candidate when we ask the panel members when we ask the employers in close quarters they reveal some secrets they say look this is supposed to be a very reputed institute in the country and this college is one of the prestigious college in this part of the country this organization has a high reputation but look at the candidates we just asked questions related to first year fundamental subjects they were not able to answer questions from whatever was taught in first year first semester forget second year third year and final year so we just asked fundamental questions we wanted somebody who is thorough with the fundamentals now what has happened to our students first year first semester whatever is learnt or whatever was mugged up was omitted and forgotten second year fresh input output came and third year again fresh input and just output released and forgotten so it's kind of short term memory selective memory not keeping in mind the long term goals that what i learned today will help me 20 years later what i learned today will make me do well in the interview that's coming after 5 years so there's no long term realization that i'm doing this so that i connect to something after some time the person is not able to develop interest in the subject rather he thinks that it's something that the teacher wants me to do and get marks the problem again is the problem of unemployability to employ somebody in the organization they want fundamental knowledge in the subject which is erased which is not available although it's given prime importance in good institutions so much efforts have been taken but it's not there in the memory not imported as a kind of skill now apart from this the subject knowledge they also look for some extracurricular activities they say that okay fine good knowledge but then just like bookworm doesn't know any current affairs and how he was performing himself very diffident very weak so certain other qualities other skills which are required they are all not known not mastered so the general unemployability problem that even with training most of the companies when they come and select the candidates they train them for at least one year they feel that even they cannot give them the training and recruit them for their companies so poorly unemployable so in india there are jobs there are lucrative jobs there are plenty of jobs but there are no takers there are no perfectionists there are less people with over ambition who are ambitious to go that extra mile to do something without looking at the watch without looking at the clock without thinking that this i have to do only for the examination i just want to get away with it so once i am done with it i'll just forget i'll throw the notes in the dustbin i don't have to use it now that attitude that wrong attitude is actually causing one's employability and many people invariably become unemployable so having said this think of the ways in which you can make yourself employable as i said the fundamental skills are the foremost supreme quality they are giving weightage combined with that they are looking for certain other presentation skills communication skills soft skills which i am going to highlight in the next few slides 
which will make you much demanded in your area, in your professional arena. Now, before we actually get into the interview room, remember the three P's. So, any common books on interview, materials on interview, they talk about three P's, which will give you also peace, peace of mind. What are the three P's? First, plan, plan. Then, prepare. Once you have planned, then prepare and then practice. Plan, prepare, practice. These three P's will give you the required peace of mind, the calmness of mind, the mental stability, the balance, the poise and eventual success in interview. Plan, prepare, practice. Let us look at these three one by one. The first thing that you must do before an interview, especially after getting the call letter is to plan. Any activity, any project, any presentation, any performance that is involving more than a person needs to be planned. So, first thing you should do is to plan. I will get into the details very soon as how you can actually plan, but first understand that you should plan. The next thing that you must do before any interview is to practice and before practice you should prepare. First plan, then prepare. Now, once you plan, you need some kind of preparation. Many people are with the wrong notion that I can just go sit in the interview, see what happens and come and if they want, they will select me. That is wrong notion, misconception because any interview needs preparation. It may be just sort of revising, giving a quick preview, review, overview of what you have studied from your uh, UG, PG curriculum, something that you have done as a project in your past job experience, just giving a quick review that will help you to keep the materials literally at your fingertips and give it to them when they want it and it creates an impression that you are so thorough in the subject. So, plan, prepare and then the next important thing that you must do before your first interview is practice. Give sufficient practice, I would say even give more than the required amount of practice, keep practicing till that day that you will get into the room for interview. Now, with that practice, you will be in a better frame of mind. So, I will just tell you more about what you should do after this practice the next few slides. In the context of three P's, plan, prepare and practice, let us look at a relevant quote from Napoleon Hill. The person who has written many books on positive thinking, here is something that he tells about generally when we are going to prepare for any kind of performance. He says, quoting from Napoleon Hill, he says, first comes thought. So, first comes thought, then organization of that thought into ideas and plans. So, if you link it with this, the thought that I should do well in an interview, the thought that I should get a good job. So, first that thought then organization of that thought into ideas. Maybe you send your resume, plan for the interview, get exposed to lectures like this, read materials on this, then transformation of those plans into reality. How do you transform? I say that you prepare your communication skills component. So, read this, read that. So, try to do that attend interviews, get experienced, yeah, do that. So, transform those plans into reality. The beginning as you will observe is in your imagination. So, you will soon realize that it is not something that is beginning after you get the call letter from the interviewer, but it is even before you get it from the employer, it is there starting from your mind. 
that you want a job you want to perform well you want to enhance your personality you want to develop your communication skills so you are doing it so the beginning as you will observe is in your imagination so once you realize this you start visualizing that you are going to do well start visualizing that you are going to get that job the way you are preparing you also start visualizing that this is a job that is meant for you only towards that visualization of winning the job try to create a professional image now from the beginning of the module on communication skills i am just trying to emphasize the point that when we talk about communication skills we are talking about effective communication and when we talk about effective communication we are trying to suggest that you should build up a professional image and when i talk about creating a professional image where are the arenas where it is required now you need professional image to present yourself and your ideas professionally and where do you do this kind of presentation even such a thing like group discussions your professional image counts job interviews very much even powerpoint presentations your professional image counts a lot telephone conversations people know that you are a professional you are ready with that notebook to take notes or you are totally an amateur in telephone conversations voicemail greetings will also project a casual you sloppy you or a professional you business meetings again will show how sloppy unprepared you are or how professionally and thoroughly prepared you are and even daily interpersonal skills interpersonal interactions will also show whether you are a professional or an inexperienced or an uncivilized person in terms of communication skills and overall if you look at professional image it counts always whether it is a personal or professional area the image of being a professional matters all the time whether it is personal level or it is professional level people highly appreciate the fact that you have a professional image but having understood this what is it that is holding us back what is it that's not giving us a mileage what is it that it's inhibiting our mind and making us underperform in interview despite our good resume despite our good talent and despite the 10 point that we have got what is it that's holding us back assumptions and assumptions because we assume most of the times we assume things wrongly assuming that oh that guy is better than me and he'll get the job assuming that this company will never select me assuming that i will do very badly in interview all this kind of assumptions and mostly negative assumptions and judgments most of the times our own judgments and letting others as judgment work on us our own judgment as i said i will not perform well in this so many so many other talented students are coming i cannot do well others judgment like maybe a senior like even your big brother or some uncle making fun laughing at you you attending that interview i cannot believe this surprising are you serious that you are going to attend this interview now others judgment others perception is based on their own inhibitions and problems so they cannot perhaps attend that interview and then they will project their fear on you they will impose their negative thinking on you but you have to ward off those kind of thinking but when you don't do that it holds you back then your own expectations most of the times people postpone things people do not start something people do not take any initiative because they want to be the best they want to be the perfection perfect perfectionist they want to give the most perfect performance now once you aim at perfection instead of thinking that okay let me start even if there are some problems let me start in an imperfect manner and then prune over these ideas develop on them work on them edit on them process them revisit them 
reinvent them change them modify them and then make them perfect instead of thinking like that if you think that you will wait for the most perfect sentence especially if you are going to write something or wait for the most perfect sentence to begin talking to somebody you may never speak or you may never write because that kind of thing is another kind of delusion that one believes that to project that i am the most perfect person i should do the most perfect thing now rather people who thought i don't have to project that i am the most perfect one but i'll just show that i'm not that perfect but i'll also show that i'm trying to improve now this is the person who always wins and even does something which we think is perfect so this is another thing that is holding us back there are other hold backs also the self image others think you are good but you think that you are no good and you have lot of negativity maybe because of background there are psychological problems today because of stress today because of stress coming from all corners society parents peer group stress people develop a falsified self image either they think the family is boosting up the image and the guy thinks that he can do well but he doesn't do well or the family is underestimating the society is underestimating the person and he suffers from lot of psychological problems today at lower level we come to know that school going kids are having psychological problems because of problem with regard to that self image maybe somebody is at fault maybe even the parents are at fault comparing one kid with others and saying that you are no good compared to this one but that has contributed to a negative self image so that's something that's holding back the person combined with the self talk what if i don't get what if i lose what if i funk what if i stop saying something in the interview i blink what if if i don't know the answer all this what if kind of questions and thoughts that also tries to hold the person back then unconscious distractions and habits so as i said talking to somebody maintaining eye contact sometimes is avoided just because uh, something else is happening so while focusing on the interview panel suddenly turning this side and looking at the picture something that's hanging or something going outside the window so unconscious distractions or hand doing something with the watch with the pen so unconscious distractions and some habits so all those things can also hold back the person uh combined with non verbal cues body language i've already said enough about body language in the module on non verbal communication i'll also highlight more on this at a slightly later stage and uncertainty people are sure to give the best performance if they are given in written even before the interview that you are selected for the job and you are given this much pay if they are certain about it many people think that they'll do their best now the converse is true if they are given in written that they are selected for the job most of the people will fail do very miserably it is that anxiety it is that uncertainty that i may not get this the tries that helps that facilitates the person to bring out his best so uncertainty also people think is holding them back is always good and as the saying goes so the only uncertain thing in the world is that nothing is certain that's the only certain thing that you can have that nothing is certain so if you think that you need something for sure something that should be certain then there is nothing in the world except this uncertainty so once you come to terms with this you can avoid that hold back and then this fear of criticism that if i do bad people will criticize fear of failure and quite surprisingly fear of the unknown that it's the first time that somebody is attending an interview the whole interview situation itself is unknown the person has not experienced such a thing in his life so that fear 
lack of familiarity with the room, looking at the interview panel members as monsters and even when they enter into the interview room, chamber, thinking that it is a torture chamber. Okay. So, that kind of uh, fear associated with the fact that the person is unfamiliar with the situation because the whole experience is unknown to him and again quite surprisingly many people are afraid of success. You will be quite surprised to know that many of us are actually afraid of success, not that people are afraid of failure because success comes with lot more responsibilities. So, ask somebody honestly why are you avoiding this, the person says that no if I get that then I may have to work some 15, 16 hours, sometimes I, am, I have to give up this weekend. No, but the package is good, yeah I know, it is giving a good reputation, yes I know, good prestige, yes and after that you can get a better job and then you can reduce the working hours, yeah even that I know. But at this moment, I do not think I can work that much or I do not, this is one hand depending on the working hours, one does not want that success. There is another psychological thinking that the person always thinks or for some reason the person has been always used as the kind of doormat, the person always thinks that I am designed for failure, okay. I am a big bungling person, how can I become successful in that? And that way success is fearing, success is giving lot of tension for the person. The person is quite comfortable with failure, he okay. is used to it and everybody has criticized and he is used to it. Now, success is afraid, he has to change the complete paradigmatic frame of thinking. Is that possible for me? So, that again holds the person back, not just fear of failure, but also fear of success. And you will be as I said quite surprised to know if you honestly ask yourself, most of us are really afraid of success than failure. Now, after planning one should actually prepare for the interview, many people actually do not prepare for the interview. As I said they just take it for granted, thinking that I can just go and do I am such a wonderful person in terms of communication skills, I am thorough with the subject. But even an eminent writer like Mark Twain says that it usually takes more than 3 weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech. If it can take 3 weeks for him to prepare a speech that would last just uh, 15 minutes or so and such an eminent writer, novelist. Do not we think that the lesser mortals, the ones who are not that equipped in terms of writing skills, spoken skills need more time for preparation? Certainly yes, we need more time for preparation and we cannot waste a single second the moment we get the call letter. And understand the other factor, when I say that we should not waste a single moment, you should also realize that it is not just that time before the interview that you can utilize it. Interview preparation is something and it is that thing that takes a lifetime and as I have put it here, it sometimes takes a lifetime to give a good interview performance. You must have seen advertisements, it just comes for a minute, hardly 2 minutes, but then how much time the advertising team is spending on it. There is a musician who has spent days, nights, hours together to bring in that one small time melody. There is editing, there is acting, there is script and then shooting itself has taken for 3-4 months, but actually it is just shown for a minute with lot of impact. Now, for that one minute people have worked for sometimes even thousands of hours together. Now, same thing goes here also, you just go sometimes for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, rarely these days interviews go for 1 hour unless they want to thoroughly grill the candidate. 
they do not go beyond 20 minutes of an hour. Good interviews last for 15, 20 minutes and they are able to assess the candidate and in case there are less candidates, sometimes they spend more time. But generally within that given frame of time, they are able to assess the candidate and they are able to uh, decide. Now, just that 15 minutes of an hour, I am saying that one needs to give a lifetime preparation, one needs to think of preparation all the time. Now, <clears throat> why you should prepare again for the interview? Because the time and quality preparation by you, the time that you are devoting and the quality preparation by you and the amount of effort you wish to put is directly proportional to your success in the interview. The efforts that you put, the time that you put will actually get you the interview results and success is a never ending process. So, once you start, it is just going to happen again, again and again. So, you started attending one interview and you thought that that is the be all and end all, no, just got the first job. Now, within the job, again you cannot think that now I will stop forever, no, there is promotion that is coming within first year they want to make you permanent. So, they are calling you for another interview. After 3 years, after 5 years, there is a promotion interview. Now, in the meanwhile, there are huge job opportunities coming from competing organizations. They also want you, but they also want you to attend the interview and give you a performance. Okay? You have gone to the other job or you got promoted, again there are interviews. You have to go for higher post, higher promotions you keep on going, you keep on moving higher up in the ladder one after another and in all the process interview, interview, interview and interviews. That is why I said one success in one interview is not going to be a be all and end all, it will take you further and further. Until perhaps the last day, the retirement day, you will keep attending interviews and then even after retirement days, these days because of uh, lack of experienced people, you may even attend another interview as a senior retired faculty, senior retired experienced person, as a kind of emeritus professor, as a kind of extraordinarily experienced person, you may be again called for another interview. So, there is no rest as far as interview is concerned. So, keep this attitude in mind, I will continue in the next lecture about more practice and more tips for getting into the interview room. So, till then thank you, we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you.